I've got an idea. Let's talk about a few lights. There's several lights here that I'd like to introduce you to. We've got the 400 watt metal halide here. This is called a compact fluorescent lamp. This one and this one are high pressure sodium 600 watt lamps. And the lamp over here is a high pressure sodium 1000 watts. Right here we have a 250 watt high pressure sodium lamp. Notice the arc tube is long. Next to it is a 250 watt high pressure metal halide lamp. Notice the arc tube is short and fat. The most efficient is the 600 watt high pressure sodium lamp. It's got a higher lumen per watt conversion than any other HID lamp. The lumen per watt conversion is the amount of lumens that are produced for, per watt of electricity. If we pay 10 cents for a kilowatt hour, and a kilowatt hour is a thousand watts that burns for an hour, well, we get 140 lumens from a high pressure sodium, we get 120 lumens from a metal halide, and we get 100 lumens from a compact fluorescent. As you can see, we get much more light from a high pressure sodium than we do from a compact fluorescent and we pay the same amount of money. This is an important factor to consider when you purchase lights. This is one of the largest wattages. It's a thousand watt high pressure sodium lamp. Here is the metal halide, thousand watt. This has the longest arc tube of all of the metal halides. For most growers, I recommend a four or 600 watt bulb. That's because they can be placed closer to the canopy of the garden. But you'll have to do some research to determine the right kind of light suit your needs. We've discussed several types of lighting now. We've got the metal halide, the compact fluorescent, and the high pressure sodium. The metal halide and the compact fluorescent produce a light that's very similar, or a spectrum of light that's very similar to natural sunlight, and the high pressure sodium produce a light that's more like the harvest sun, and it's a bit yellow in color. The closer marijuana is to a light source, the better it grows as long as it's not so close that heat from the lamp burns foliage. Uh, a good question is, how do you know what's too close and what's too far away? What's a good rule of thumb to tell? Well, the easiest way to tell is to hold your hand under here. Light fades quite quickly, and it fades to the square of the distance. So all you have to do is move that lamp a little bit closer, and you get a lot more efficient use of your light. If I put my hand down here about 18 inches away, it feels fine and I have no trouble whatsoever. So that's a real good barometer and that's where these plants are now at 18 inches. Over here on the side they've come up, but they're still about 18 inches away from the, the actual light. And here we have a large light hood or reflector with a 400 watt lamp inside. This 400 watt lamp is not nearly as hot as the 1000 watt lamp. And I can put my hand about four inches underneath the arc tube and it's not as hot as it was with 1000 watt lamp when my hand was a foot underneath the arc tube. Another way to tell if your plants are too hot is to uh, hold a thermometer under there. Then you can tell exactly how hot it is. We've got eight feet by eight feet. If we want to use the entire room for growing, we would put one light here, one light here, one here, and one here. And notice that the growth is fairly even all the way across the entire crop, which is a very good thing. That's what you want to do is keep the canopy approximately even. Nearly all stationary lamps have a bright or hot spot that plants grow toward. Yield is increased by giving the growing area uniform light distribution. Rotate plants every day or two by giving them one quarter to one half turn. Also, move smaller plants toward the center and taller plants toward the outside of the garden. The small plants should be set on a stand to even out the garden canopy. Spreading the light all depends on the reflective hood that you've got. Adding the proper reflective hood over your lamp can double growing area, which means growers who use the most efficient reflective hoods harvest up to twice as much as those who don't. There's all kinds of reflectors. Everybody says they have the best one, but what are the principles that work best? A few things I'd like to say to begin with. One is a hard or a shiny white 
is going to create hot spots. Any folds or bends in the reflector are going to create hot spots. Mirror images will also create hot spots. The best reflective surface is either a dull or a matte finish or a pebble finish that's a pounded hammer finish. It could be an aluminum color or a silver or a white. It's all about the same. Titanium white's going to be the brightest. Aluminum foil is one of the worst possible reflective surfaces. The foil crinkles up and reflects light at oblique angles. The shape should be, well, in a horizontal reflector, it should be a double parabolic with the bulb right in the middle. If it's a vertical lamp, it should be a great big parabolic dome like this. And we'll see examples of both. This parabolic dome reflector is not necessarily the most efficient reflector, but nonetheless it spreads light very evenly throughout the grow room and it's an excellent reflector to use for vegetative growth because during vegetative growth stage they do not need as much light. Here we've got a 400 watt metal halide underneath, it's called a, a cone hood. And this hood is one of the, the most ineffective or inefficient hoods there is. If you have to use one, go ahead. If not, find something else because you'll be smart and you'll spend less money over the long run if you use a parabolic over a cone hood. Horizontal reflectors are the most efficient for HID systems and the best value for growers. A horizontal lamp yields up to 40% more light than a lamp burning in a vertical position. You can replicate the movement of the sun through the sky with a motorized light mover. This lamp is moving back and forth about four feet. Well, normally this lamp would be 24 inches um, above the plants, but since it's moving and it has, it's ventilated very well, it can be placed closer and that's a very good use of your lamp. Also, if you wanted to work in here at night when it's dark, all you'd have to do is replace this with a green lamp, green light bulb, and you could work here no trouble at all and it would not affect the photo period whatsoever. That's a real good tip because many times people want to work in their room at night, but they're afraid to turn on the light. It's not a good idea to turn on the light, but a green light will make that all possible. Here's these duplex outlet. Here's a rheostat for a fan. Here's a humidistat to control humidity, and here's the thermostat to control temperature. So it's all contained in one place. Real simple technology. Anybody can put these up in just a few minutes. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to mount this board right up here, right on top of the plastic so I've got good access to everything. Okay, now when I put this screw in, I want to put it in nice and slow so it comes all the way through and just barely touches my finger. If you put it in too fast, you're going to be screwed. The third screw and the fourth. Okay? It's too far. Oh no, we're fine. There. Now notice that the electricity comes right through the side of the wall. This is very, very convenient. So I pull my light or my cord out here, plug in the fan, and then the lamp which I'll mount right now, will be plugged in to this timer. The timer is very necessary to play the role of Mother Nature because in the flowering room, we need to have 12 hours dark and 12 hours light. The timer will control this. A timer will also help control uh, irrigation schedules, fan schedules, whatever you'd like. Don't start without having the appropriate timer. This eight by eight room, could use four 600 watt lamps. Now, what we've decided to do for the sake of demonstration is to hang one lamp, show you exactly how it's done, do a real nice job of it, and then let you decide how many lamps you'd like to hang yourself. What we have here is a 600 watt high pressure sodium ballast. The ballast regulates the flow and the voltage of electricity. The electricity comes in through this heavy duty grounded plug, transforms the energy into something that the lamp can use and sends it out this cord here. Now this socket is just like your ordinary household socket except it's much larger and it's made from porcelain and it's heavy duty. Now here's our bulb, 600 watt high pressure sodium bulb. We put this bulb inside 
the mogul socket. This is a lightweight aluminum reflector that uh, is easy to hang, but it's not so light that it will move around when the air blows. And that's where I'm going to mount it. Screw in, screw in, screw out. Now I've got a nice little hole started for my hook and I'll just put this one in by hand. And I'll just tie a quick little granny knot here. You can use a square knot or a bowline, whatever you like, but there's no way that this is going to slip. Now, the next step is to hang the lamp. Now, I just run this little, this cord over to the uh, hook, make a little loop here, approximately where I want the lamp to, to be, and hook it there. Now, I'll leave a long tail on this that I can easily make more knots in or more loops in, but I can adjust the level of the lamp very easily now. I just put the bulb in and turn it. Okay, now right towards the end it gets a little difficult to turn, so what I'll do is I'll grab this mogul socket and turn the bulb another quarter of a turn. Remember to seat your bulb properly. Make sure it's screwed all the way in so there's a contact at the bottom of the socket. Otherwise, the bulb won't start. And I just don't like any of this like oily fingerprints on the bulb. In fact, I think I'll wipe the entire bulb down. Always keep your bulbs clean. I've seen so many dirty bulbs, it's disgusting. And just a little bit of dirt will cut your light transmission by five to ten percent. The bulb's in, it's tied off here, we can move it up and down, the transformers outside the grow room, up on a shelf where it's safe. We don't like these on the floor because remember the electricity goes above the waste and the water below the waste. Now the timer can be set for 12 or 18 hours, even 24 hours if you'd like, depending upon what you're growing. 12 and 12 for flowering, 18 and 6, 18 hours of daylight, 6 hours of darkness for vegetative growth, or you can even run it at 24 hours a day for vegetative growth. Some people like that very well. And it always seems like we need something else. So always leave a little bit of extra room so you've got all of your controls in one place. That way you can take a quick visual inventory of everything and know exactly what's going on in your room. There. Fits perfectly. <laughs>